Good evening everyone, how are you all doing? So, welcome to this week's One Image My Edit. Now, this was scheduled for half seven this evening and uh, um, I got a, a message from someone about 15 minutes ago saying, when are you going live? And I thought of all these great excuses that I could tell you why I'm now going live at nine o'clock. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you, I thought it was a Wednesday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my kids were off school yesterday, which was obviously Monday, and uh, my body clock has stayed in Sunday. So, um, yeah, it's Tuesday today, <laughs> and I don't know why I thought it was Wednesday when I had my kids on a Monday. I think lockdown is finally getting to me now, um, and every day seems to merge into one. So I think I'm going to buy myself a calendar and pin it to my head. Um, so sorry about that, <coughs> but um, we're all here now anyway, and uh, I hope you enjoy this um, this edit. So what I thought I would do this week is, um, within the space of 10 minutes of putting something together, um, I'm going to um, keep with the mood and drama um, that we've been doing. So we've had the, uh, you know, the portraits, we had the um, the wildlife um, we had some uh, landscapes, and now I thought we'd do something along the same lines in street photography. Um, so this is a picture I took. This is probably about two years ago now. This was the um, the last um, street photography workshop we'd done in London. Um, and obviously since then, COVID has happened, so it's impossible to do at the minute. But yeah, this was... Uh, this was a guy that was out begging with his dog. Uh, I got a snapshot of it. And I think a few of, of the other people that were on the course, they got some really nice shots as well. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to, I'm going to, like I say, stick to that mood and drama. But I thought of doing something on the lines of this. So what we're doing is kind of adding a little bit of drama to it, um, but also making it um, a little bit, what's the word, uh, cinematic. Now, I've just kind of put something together as a um, just sort of just messing around, but I think I'm going to change some of the settings and go more along the lines of something like that. So we're adding a bit of a blue tinge to the actual shot, okay? Um, so, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to reset that, and I will start from the very beginning. Uh, let me know if you can all hear me. Everything's fine. Um, just to make sure that I am communicating with you on Facebook and wherever else you may be. Right, okay. So let's make a start then. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not actually going to change the color balance to start with. I'm going to leave that till um, later. So I mean color balance, I mean the white balance. Um, I'm going to save that until later on, okay? Um, but I think to start with, let's let's just look at the image and let's have a look at the actual crop. So I'm going to press the O key to get the different variations of, of crops that we can have. So I'm going to get the uh, here look, the, the golden ratio. The whole shift and O down, then it changes. Now, what I'm going to do is use this to help basically produce a, a, an image that's better flowing. So this point here. I'm going to adjust that so it starts around his eye there. Okay, so what that means is, is that we're going to naturally be drawn to this eye. It's going to come up, and we want this sweeping round. Now, ideally, we want that kind of clipping onto there. You see what I'm doing there? So, um, but, you know, with that, it, we're going to get more of a square shot, which is going away from a cinematic crop, um, but I think it will it will work it will work well. And then just finishing off down here, look, where it's just skimming the bottom of that um, that takeaway box there. So I think that would be a good start. So yeah, I think the square crop works. So you know that would be good because we can then post that on Instagram and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to bring the highlights down a little bit, and I'm, again I may come back to these um, and and change these later on. Um, I'm just setting the image up for for a um, you know for this kind of dark and moody effect that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to bring the shadows down, and I'm just tweaking these at the minute. These aren't going to be the, the definite results. 
So the whites, we want to really compress them quite a bit. So I'm going to push them down to about 19, 20, something like that. And then obviously the blacks, I'm going to bring them quite far down to around 25, something like that. So we're just kind of starting to really push these, um, you know, all of these levels down so we can get that real nice effect. Um, texture and clarity, I can add maybe a little bit of that. Um, maybe bring the clarity down a little bit so it gives a, a, a more of a film style look. When I mean film, I mean like movie. Um, so you'll find that they're, you know, they're not as razor sharp as, as digital. I want to try and emulate that old school cinematic look. So let's bring the vibrance down a little bit because it is quite vibrant. Let's bring this down to around 15, 16, something like that. And again, let's bring the saturation down. So we're just starting to push things down and really compress things. And then within the tone curve, what I'm going to do, you've got a few options there. So you've got this one here where you can select the highlights and shadows or uh, the one that I've been using every week for the last sort of month showing you guys is this one here, which is the point curve. And what that means is that you can add points. So let's add a point here, which is the white. Let's add a point here, which is the gray and a point here, which is the black. So now we've done that, when I change the white here, it's not going to affect them at the very top there. Um, that's why we put this point there. So I can start suppressing the white without actually going, you know, into 100% white and really dulling that down. Because if I do that, then it's it's going to start just sort of destroying the image a little bit. So let's pull this down, uh, put it down to about there. And you can see that's helping us with that suppression. And again, let's do that with the greys. So let's pull that right down. And you can see this is, uh, you know, one of the main factors of, of the actual image of this, this whole look is, is just by doing it with the curve tool. Let's bring that down there. And let's just pull these blacks up a little bit. So we are kind of starting to make them a little bit washed out. But I'm only going to do it a little bit. I have uh, in recent times been using that more higher up, I think, just to emulate the analog film style, just bring it up a tad because uh, it'd be a very slight adjustment. And then the obvious color, you know, with um, this cinematic is, is blue. So I'm going to go straight to the blue curve. I'm going to leave the green and reds, I think, stick with the blue. Um, and again, I'm going to make these anchor points. So one there for the whites, one for the gray, and one for the blacks. But this time, I am going to start suppressing these blues. I'm going to really start bringing them down. And what that's going to do is start introducing more yellow into the blues, into the shadows. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to slightly tweak this up. So the, the whites in this section have a little bit more blue in them. And I'm probably going to come down to the bottom and maybe just push that up a little bit. And I think that is quite good. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to push these the, the midtones up towards the blue a little bit because I want it to be quite cool looking with regards to that film look. Now, if I push this up, so what we're basically doing is adding yellows into the highlights and blues into the shadows, um, which I'm going to do more of in a minute anyway. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit because there's a little bit too much yellow there. So it's around there. There we go. That's quite good. Okay. So within the hue, saturation, luminance, again, this is now we're looking at the hue. We're going to change how these colors are working. So we can, you know, the aqua, we can make them more green. We can make them more blue. And you can see it's it's this um, ladder effect. So the reds go into oranges, which then become oranges and then continue into yellows. And it just keeps on following us. So we can change these, what they look like. So if I go to the red, for instance, I'm gonna, I can boost that up. What that's going to do is actually start making the reds look more orange, which is what I want. I want it to be uh, a little bit warmer. Um, but at the same time, if I bring these oranges down, that's going to then compound that that look. So my my red and oranges are only in this range now. OK, um, I'm going to bring the greens down a little bit just so they're um, a little bit more towards the yellow side. And same with the aqua, I'm going to bring that down a little bit as well. So again, my greens are only in this section here. And the reason for that is, is because I'm, I'm trying to really limit um, 
the the actual hues of each color i'm trying to suppress it so it's not a broad range okay that's that's the that's the the reason behind it and the blues is bringing them down to about minus nine ten something like that um and again that starts to just compress them them image them uh, them hues within that range and then in the saturation we can start now kind of starting to take the color away so we can add it or we can start taking it away and obviously with with an analog kind of film look we want to start suppressing these so i'm going to bring these down and i'm just looking at the image by eye at the minute um these kind of look about right again every image is going to be slightly different for you um there's no hard rule with this um but i think just bringing these down little by little is, is always the best option and what you'll find is is that obviously red is the most sensitive color to the eye and within this picture there are some key elements with this and this is kind of why that uh, that crop works as well because red's the most sensitive color to the eye because the back of the red is red red and if you look in this there's some vital stuff in here so obviously the dog's got red uh, glasses and uh, collar there's the, the the record sale sign which is pointing towards the dog and the guy the red cup and the red bag so you know that is luck nothing about that but it's luck but it but it works and it's quite a vital part of the image um so just bringing that down means it's going to kind of help it um melt in together a little bit better and it's not going to be as as in your face um okay so the greens are down a little bit i think the aquas we could bring them down as well around there um the purples i think i'd yeah probably bring the blues down a little bit as well it's around there purples again just just bringing them down and same with the magentas just bring them down as well so i'm just really if you look at the the spectrum of it the top end and the bottom end have the red so you've got the red and, and magenta so if you look what i'm doing is is just kind of suppressing them the most okay um and i've kind of brought these the greens and yellows up ever so slightly they're they're kind of not as as, as muted because the, the green and yellow tones are what are present in 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 um in the film kind of analog look as well as the blues so the luminance then is the brightness so you know we can now counteract the saturation and you know we've lost some of that color so we don't want to lose that brightness so we just bring that up a little bit and this just helps keep the image looking healthy um if that's a word to, to describe it uh so there we go it just brings brings the life back um so let's bring these up a little bit because what we don't want to do is completely flatten the image okay so again you'll see that i'm just starting to uh, brighten the, the like the reds are not as much as these kind of tones here you can see it kind of follows suit there's like an arrow pointing that way and it will pretty much be the same on this one really um to the greens bring them up a little bit uh and maybe just bring that up a little little bit maybe even to the the one there yeah so there we go so i'm quite happy with that and you can see all of them there um and how they kind of follow you can see they're quite similar aren't they yeah so with this orange up here you can see that's a little bit lower right so now let's get on to the color grading which is the fun part um for you know changing the way that your images look so you have the three elements you've got the midtones which are the grays you've got the shadows which are the blacks and the highlights which are the whites so what i'm going to do is just concentrate on the shadows and highlights at the minute so shadows i want like i said i want to add a blue tinge to it so if i click on this color here this little square rather it comes up and it, and it automatically gives me a nice blue okay so i can click on that or i can select my own now if we bring if we click and bring this forward and back you can see this sat which is saturation that moves so we can control the saturation okay so how blue is that blue that's really blue and that's nothing okay uh, and then the hue is the shade of blue okay so again we can we can move this left and right and you can see the hue number here moving um so i'm going to go around something around there so it's going into the deeper blues and this is bringing saturation up a little bit um and i think around 
about there, something like that. That's quite nice. Again, you can come back to that. Uh, mid-tones, we're not going to do the mid-tones. I'm going to leave them. The highlights, now because of the, the, the colour wheel, um, the obvious thing to do is to do opposites. Okay, so it's colour harmony we're looking at here. So what we want to do is get the opposite colour from the blue. That is going to that is going to complement that shade. Okay, and we've got the red in there as well. We've hit these here. So what we're actually doing is a triad. So we've got these yellow coming onto green tinge here in the highlights, which I'm going to add in a second. The blues are in the shadows and the reds are present in the picture. OK, and they're kind of I suppose you could call them. They're not mid tones, but they're present. And that gives us a triad. So that gives us three colors that harmonize and work well with each other okay um that's why i'm doing it um so let's go again you can you know this is entirely up to you what kind of hue and saturation you want to do i would go with this something very subtle around there uh, and i can obviously come back to that later on but i want to go more heavy on the blue and less on the yellow because there's a lot of yellow present which we're going to need to change with the white balance in a bit anyway um so once you've done that you can kind of come to all three of them and you've got blending and balance so we can we can balance this have more blue or we can have more yellow um so i'm gonna maybe go have a look maybe just plus five just to help that along a little bit okay now i'm gonna leave detail and sharpening and noise reduction all that kind of stuff because that's uh pretty straightforward stuff um same with the effects and transform now what i'm going to do is a calibration and this is where we are actually changing the physical properties of the primary colors now every color a primary color is is in every color yes yeah? so red green and blue they're your primary colors uh, and understanding these as well as um color grading and, and hue saturation limits that's something that i would uh definitely say that you need to spend more time on okay understanding that because that is how you're going to harmonize your images and make them look better with color okay so with the reds uh, i'm going to come up to the hues and just push them up a little bit um so we're, we're changing the physical properties of that red to have more of a orange sort of vibe to it okay so i'm trying to dull these reds down a little bit Within the greens, I'm going to, um, with the hue, I'm going to push that up again because of the, 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 the film style look. It just has a little bit more green with it. So let's boost the saturation up as well. Okay, let's match it 13. Um, the hue, I'm actually going to push that up slightly. And the saturation, I'm going to push that up. And in fact, I'm probably going to go around there. Okay, that's quite cool. Right. So now we've kind of um, we've kind of done the majority of the work there. Now, what I'm going to do is come back up to here where we've got the color temperature and exposure and things like that. So the reason why I didn't do them to start with is because when when um, video editors, so I'm talking, about, you know, people that edit movies, what they will do is they would do color correction and make adjustments first. And then they will go back and they will correct um, the white balance and the exposure. So what they will do is, is, you know, they'll almost apply the effect first, then correct the white balance and exposure. Whereas photographers, we tend to do it um, exposure and white balance first, and then we carry on. Um, so this is the, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because this is the traditional way of doing it. And this is how people will video editors, especially will know this. This is this is what they do. Uh, and, you know, it's 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 a bit back to front to us, but um, to them, it's that's just their method. And, and there's obviously reason behind that. Um, so let's let's have a look then. Let's have a look at the color temperature. So we know that we want to start adding this this cool effect so we can start bringing this down now and all the work that we've just done will start coming to life so we can bring that down a little bit we can change the tint and we can add green to it or we can start adding a little bit of magenta to it um, which helps because of the green and the way that we've messed around with the green um, just pushing up the tint a little, a little bit just helps with the overall vibe of the shot 
Um, and then the exposure, I think the exposure could come down a little bit, actually, maybe sort of half a stop, something like that. There we go. That just gives it a little bit more of a rugged feel. And you can probably see now that everything's starting to come in place just by moving these four sliders. It's all coming, you know, it's all coming together now. Um, so with the contrast, we don't want it contrast. You actually want to try and suppress it a little bit because um, movies, you know, the way they are, they tend to be not have a lot of contrast in them uh funny enough um so let's just tweak this now so we've got this blue now being very aware we don't want to go too blue but we still want to give that kind of cool uh look to the actual whole shot so again we can now come and tweak these so we can look at these highlights uh, and maybe start bringing them down a little bit and the shadows as well so we want to make sure some blacks in there and these whites are quite interesting. We could, we could actually start bringing these whites down a little bit more. Um, and especially with, you know, within film it is very much, uh, the whites are, are, are suppressed quite a lot when they get this cinematic look and same with the blacks as well, but we've got to be careful that we don't start adding too much dark areas within the blacks because it will, um, it will start to make it look uh, a little bit too flat. If we start doing that, can you see? So we've got to be very careful. This is a real minor adjustment. It's about there. And there we go. So that is what I would do. Um, to finish it off, I'd maybe use the brush tool and come down to sharpness and then make that minus 100%. Make sure the feather and flow and the density is high. Just move the size up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is click down here where it shows show selected mask overlay. And I'm just going to paint in some of these areas here um, just to make everything look a little bit softer. And what that's going to do is bring more, even more attention to the guy, his dog, and the uh, basically the whole image in general we want the eye to be drawn into these guys here these two okay because they're the stars of the show so by doing this by making it softer even though it is out of focus already we, we're just we're pushing that even more it's just going to help and obviously you can take your time and get some really nice adjustments with your shots unlike me where i am just speeding things up a little bit OK, um, so and it helps to have the auto mask on. That's how you're in, you know, you can kind of select areas without it bleeding over into things, um, which is, is really, really handy. OK, so I think that's that's pretty cool. I think that will work. Let's just make sure we get these ends here. There we go. Um, and let's fill in these while we're at it. Okay, so all this is going to help. Right, cool. So what we can then do is just click on the show selected mask overlay and we'll see that the, so the sharpness there, we're just going to bring that down to minus 100% and that's just going to help. Okay. Another thing we could do is use the radial tool. So this up here, and then if we click and just, let's put this to, um exposure and let's just bring the exposure up uh, literally 0 0.1 but just a tiny tiny bit and let's draw a circle around the dog's face and we can click on the show selected mask overlay and it shows us what that's going to do so we click on the invert because we want the inside of this selection to be adjusted nothing else and if we push the feather up you can see what that does there as well that helps blend it so you won't get a hard you know around the edges it'll be quite soft around the edges there so let's just uh, there we go so that and let's right click on that duplicate and then just drag and we'll do the same on the guy there so we've got the same exposure so we look on that one there and look on that one there press done and that's just helped pop the the these out a little bit um if i come back to the history you'll see um when i do that you can see it is so minute but it's the it's that little 
them little edits, them little tricks that you do that just draw the eye into the place that you want people to look at. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, that is how I would add sort of drama to your street photography, make it very, very moody. If we look at the before and after, you can actually see there's, there's quite a big difference there um, with, you know, taking relatively what was a quick snapshot and then making it look a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more moody, um, and, you know, a little bit more appealing, in my opinion. Um, I think that, that certainly adds drama to it. Uh, and the good thing with this is that, you know, if you're shooting on a on a day where it's quite flat, quite, um, you know, the light is not, there's no, there's no high sort of contrast or in the brights or, or in the blacks, you can use this effect, um, you know, across all your images and they will then constantly, you know, they're all at the same. So you can start telling a bit of a story with your images through manipulation, through color and through, you know, suppressing these uh, these different tones. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as always, VIP guys, I will post this uh, preset um, in the group for you now. Uh, and you will then be able to use that and you can study the preset have a play around yourselves so everybody else my apologies for being extremely late um, but i hope you've enjoyed that let me know um, have a play around with your images post them up in the group let me see them and if you've got any questions you can always ask take care and i'll see you soon Bye bye